Okay, so in the last video we finished the layer um, class, so I'm just going to compile this, make sure that it works, and it does compile, so that's good. So now I want you to add another um, class, I'm going to call it level. It's going to be the actual level class, so probably a bit longer than most of it, may have take up two videos, or I'll probably just, I'll probably copy and paste a lot of the code in because it's useless me just sitting here typing. So the using statements, same as the layer, we need frame, input, or framework, input and graphics, I think that's the same. Yeah, even though I don't know why we have input there in the layer, we don't need it really. But anyway. So we want to make this public class as well, and we want to make variables, uh, map height, map width, map height, tile width, tile height, obviously to store those values. Then we need to create three new layers, three new layer objects, well, tile layer 1, tile layer 2, and solid layer. The solid layer is going to be the collision layer, so they're all just ones and zeros. So if the the player hits something, that's how we'll know. So I'm gonna also create a rectangle list to hold the tile set. So we divide it up into a list of rectangles, like it's the bounds on the tile sheet of where each tile should be. Also, we want to make a, a rectangle list for all the collision rectangles. That will be populated any time we change change the map. We also want to create two variables that just hold temporary data, but it's better than reallocating it and have the garbage collector doing it all the time. So there isn't really any need to have a constructor for the map. So we're going to just have uh, a load function, a draw function, and uh, a load load tile set and populate collision layer, those are the four functions that they're going to be. So, we'll make public void, void uh, load map. And we want to pass the load file name. That's it. Okay. So, we're going to make a, a try and catch statement to catch any errors that may come up and it's just good practice to do this because you might try and load something that isn't actually there or anything like that and at least this way you'll know somewhere where, it, where it's going wrong so there was an error loading the map is the file name correct? Okay, so that's that's our error checking taken care of. Now what we want to do is declare and initialize a stream reader object so we can read in. So we declare the stream reader here, I call it OBJ reader, and we wanna create we wanna initialize it and open the file and the file is load file name, so that's that's the, the file path, sorry. What I want to do now is get the map height, map width, tile height, tile width from from the uh, the actual file and we want to reinitialize the map layers. So we've read four lines from the top of it <coughs> converted them all into integers and stored them in our values. Then we want to reinitialize the map layer. Each each layer, tile layer one, tile layer two, solid layer. Um, and that gives us blank layers. Now then we want to fill them up. And that we're just calling that function that we made in the last one, that load layer. That's going to load each layer separately. And just for good practice, we want to close that file at the end. Okay, close the fi text file and 
dispose of the stream reader object. Okay, that's basically what we want to do. So the other things I'm gonna I'm gonna do the load tile load tile set. Okay. Alright, and we want to load that from a texture 2D. We'll call it texture or tile setting. Then put in my return type, void. So, we want to get the tile sheet dimensions. That's how many tiles are are there on the X, how many tiles are there on the Y. So that's the tile sheet dot width over the tile width that gets us our um, gets us the actual number of tiles on the X and on the Y. Now we want to initialize the tile set list. So if there was a list before that we create a new one. Um, and that'll be holding all the tiles, so that's the number of tiles on the X multiplied by the number of tiles on the Y, it gives you the total number of tiles all together. Then what we want to do is split the tile sheet into separate tiles. And we're not actually splitting it, we're just storing the bounds of them. So we want to four loop through the Y, four loop through on the X. Then we want to create a new rectangle for bounds, that was our temporary rectangle that we declared up at the top. <coughs> and um, that's our I value multiplied by the tile width gives us how far along on the X of the tile sheet we are. J multiplied by the tile height gives us the Y and obviously the tile width and the tile height are the height are the width and height of the rectangles. And then we're just gonna add that to that to our tile set list. So that's simple enough. I'm gonna make the populate collision layer um, method now. Doesn't take any parameters. And it is very similar to that last one that we just did. So, what we want to do is redeclare the rectangle list for collidable tiles. Then we've just got um, two for loops looping through the array one on the X, that's map width, one on the Y, that's map height then if there's, if there's a collidable tile in that position so if at that layer position at the X and Y it equals one, one being solid, zero being um, not solid <laughs> um, we want to add a new rectangle to the collision list so Basically, this you do this at the start of the level, and then every frame will go through, check against each collision rectangle. There are other ways to do it. You can just check the ones that are nearest to the player while you're actually going through. It depends what you're doing. If you're doing this on PC, it's not a big deal. It has enough memory to cope with it. It's what well, it should do. So, uh, collision rects dot add new rectangle x times the tile width gives us the actual position on the x and x y times the tile height gives us the y position and tile width and tile height obviously are the width and height of each collision rectangle for any immovable object for uh, like a wall say a wall so i'm gonna just gonna stop here and then in the next one we'll do the draw um, the draw method because it's kind of long and we'll do the hopefully do the player class as well and then in the video after that we'll tie it all up in a nice wee bow and uh, get it all sorted and that'll be it finished and then you can get down to expanding this and doing whatever else you want to do so uh, yeah I'll just continue on in the next video